Hello everyone, my name is Mystery Gex and I'm back with another Rome 2 replay cast and this time I'm bringing you a battle that I played with Socrates uh, a while ago, that is SH Socrates and he's a good friend of mine and he's also a very good player and this is going to be somewhat of, uh, of a more educational video in that we're going to be discussing uh, one of the main meta tools in Total War Rome 2 and how it can be very easy to go a little bit too far um, in utilizing it. So I'm going to quickly start this replay over here. I'm going to go over the armies. Uh, my opponent Socrates is going to be playing as Sparta and I'm going to be playing as Basilia. Uh, the more uh, keen-eyed of you, that the uh, eagle-eyed, the right word, uh, will have noticed that I have uh, four step armored lancers over here uh, which are a tool from the Masegete and uh, my friend Socrates here has glitched in four heavy horse he used the glitching technique which I'm not going to elaborate in this video because um, I don't want people to be using it in quick battles online to exploit it uh, you should always, but if you do know how to do it you should always do it when your opponent is consented to it and uh, not in quick battle but anyway, uh, back to the replay so I've brought uh, five Mycelian hoplites I believe from four of these step armored lancers, I have four axe warriors, I believe, um, five axe warriors, and a thorax sword. So that's uh, the melee cap of six, I believe, and I have two missiling cavalry, as well as three Celtic slingers. And my opponent over here, Mr. S. H. Socrates, has four periodic or spirits, which are going to be very useful. And the reason why he brought those is because um, he knows that I bring a lot of cavalry. Cavalry is um, uh, one of my favorite tools in the army. That's a bit of an understatement, but I use cavalry a lot in this game. Um, overkill, certainly, sometimes. So he's brought a lot of these so he can deal with uh, the cavalry that he knew I would bring. He's brought a very strong hoplite core. He has uh, four Royal Spartans, I believe, um, somewhere here. Let's pause it quickly before the action begins. So he has one Spartan hoplite, Spartan hoplite. So one hero Sparta, one Royal Spartan, another Royal Spartan, another hero of Sparta. Um, so yeah, very strong hoplite core, he has three Gorgos skirmishers which are going to destroy my Celtic slingers which means that I'm going to have to take the initiative and I'm going to engage this first and rather peculiarly he has his heavy horse here and they're not stretched out in a wide formation uh, to deal with any YOLO charge that I, um, I put forward essentially so he's going to let me take the initiative this time and that's very interesting uh, because he told me afterwards why he did this and I'll explain at the very end of the video exactly what he said um, but um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do the traditional meta thing of YOLO charging my opponent. So I'm going to be charging in all my cavalry to get as much HP damage done to my opponent as possible. As you can see here we have two lines of infantry but thankfully for me because these are hoplites there's no second line of precursors. So this shouldn't be too damaging for me. It's actually quite uh, a good gambit it seemed at the time. So let's have a look and see how it goes for me um, because I think it will be very interesting. Um, to look exactly how this goes down because it will affect the rest of the battle and if I manage to succeed in this it will result in my victory if I fail it will result in my defeat so I'm going to push forward my Mycelian Hoplites who I've put at the very front because I don't want these Axe Warriors getting charged by his Heavy Horse which can do a lot of damage to them by the way I've brought all these Axe Warriors because they have a lot of armor piercing and if they are put behind my Mycelian Hoplites uh, so they're not, they're not losing decisively they will it'll be very difficult to route them and they'll do a lot of armor piercing to his Spartans so obviously that was a strategy there uh, I'm going to do a quick YOLO charge here, I'm going to change my targets last second over here. So I'm going to get some decent charges, I'm going to hit his general, I'm going to hit his Spartan Hoplites. But I would like the viewer to pay attention here to the fact that I'm going to lose a lot of my Step Armored Lancers here, and my friend over here, SH Socrates, is going to do very little to counter this. In fact, he's not going to bother at all with his Heavy Horse. And at first I thought this was just poor Micro on his front, but if you look carefully, my Step Armored Lancers have taken ridiculous losses and they haven't done that much HP damage. Yes, I'm more guaranteed to win the infantry fight and I actually feel that my chances in terms of the infantry fight are better than Sparta's right now because I have a lot of Axe Warrior support and they're an amazing unit. We have 10 armor piercing for them so that is a huge trump card in my favor. But at the same time, my cavalry contingent has been almost entirely eliminated here. I have two Missilian cavalry. I did push them forward here on the left and right flank but realizing that he has spear support here, I want to delay the engagement as quickly as possible. He gets hung up here on my Massilian Hoplites, but I'm very easily winning the central infantry engagement, destroying these Royal Spartans of my um, uh, heavily armor-piercing Axe Warrior units. I'm going to get a last second charge here on the heavy horse. Actually, my Massilian Cavalry are a really good unit. They will do pretty well in that engagement. I think they'll trade quite cost-effectively, although he is going to reinforce them with spears. So what you'll notice is that um, my cavalry has taken a lot of HP damage and he has all of his cavalry, they have not been YOLO charged so that means that um, 
to newer viewers, despite the fact that I've only lost 46, um, sorry, I have 46 left, which means I've only lost 14 units on this cavalry unit, they've taken a lot of HP damage from hitting those spears, so they're going to melt on a charge. So as you're going to see here, my guys are going to drop very, very quickly here, 42 already. These heavy horse have a lot of mass behind them, and he's going to support with spears. So while I am winning the central infantry engagement quite convincingly, he's going to manage to overpower me with cavalry, and sadly, because my hoplites have no precursors, he's going to shove his heavy horse right through this massive gap in the middle, and there's going to be very little I can do with my slingers. I should have switched um, fire at will off here, I normally do. I think I am going to, yeah, I, I do switch fire at will off here last second, but that's not good enough. I'm going to turn all my slingers to deal with um, this heavy horse here, but it's too late. And as you can see, this is where the match is going to be an absolute disaster here. I have very little cavalry left on the field because of my initial yolo charge, and from a cavalry advantage, I went from a cavalry disadvantage. So despite the fact that I'm going to win this um, infantry engagement quite easily, the fact that he's going to have both skirmishers left because I've lost all my cavalry, and he's going to have cavalry left, is going to lose me the match. Um, so yeah, spoilers. He has Puroiko support here of his spears, but I'm going to pull out my cavalry here because... Um, there's no need to stay engaged with these spears here. He does have the opportunity to outflank me here with his hoplites. Uh, and he's getting some nice rear charges with his heavy horse, getting some nice kills. But as you can see, I am winning the central engagement. Um, I'm getting cheeky last second charges on um, the heavy horse so that um, I can make them pay for the, that engagement. My general here is going to absolutely destroy this Perioiko spear. And I'm going to get behind his units here. But again, he has a lot of cavalry left. I'm going to support here with a um, Massilian Hoplite, but again, no precursors, very heavy unit. The, they're probably going to mob up my cavalry before I can even get to them. Uh, that's one of the disadvantages of bringing Hoplites, however tanky they may be. He's going to get a nice charge here, or he's not actually, and I'm probably going to take down a lot of his heavy horse, so that's a micro fail from him over here. Um, yeah, I'm doing very well in the, in the infantry engagement, but as I predicted, I'm losing my Massilian cavalry and my step armored lancers faster than I can get my my uh, Massilian Hoplites to support. So I think the, the main lesson, the reason why I wanted to share this video is that the main lesson to take home is that YOLO charging, there should always be a point to your YOLO charging. I had, um, I'm not sure if I had an infantry advantage, but I at least had parity. And what I definitely had was a cavalry advantage. I had four step armored lances, which are probably the most cost effective lance infantry, uh, lance unit in the game. Uh, so I could have easily have dealt with his, with, with his heavy horse, honestly, even with, with spear support. So rather than playing on the advantage of my cavalry versus his and being able to mop up his skirmishers while protecting mine, and skirmishers in the late game are very important, I went ahead and did the overkill maneuver. I decided that I really wanted to win the infantry engagement, and uh, what good is there to winning the infantry engagement when your opponent is left with semi-elite skirmishers and cavalry at the very end of the game? Um, that's the that's the, 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 the lesson to take home here. You have to be very careful with YOLO charging because you take um, an incredible amount of damage um, from from doing it and there has to be a purpose to it. Um, I remember there was a really good video that I saw on Maximus Decimus Meridius' channel where Greek Heraclus plays uh, against another really good player and for some reason Heraclus, as the Seleucids, lets all of his units get rear charged and at first thought you think to yourself why, why did he allow that to happen? He's going to lose the infantry engagement decisively. And um, the battle's over, basically. But the reason why he did that was because when the Median Cavalry charged into his uh, front line, and I'm going to link this video in the description so you guys can have a look at what I'm talking about, um, the Median Cavalry lose so much HP from all the javelins that um, in the late game his opponent has no cavalry, and yet Heraclius has a huge line of skirmishers and horse archers, and uh, can very easily deal with what infantry remains. So yeah, we just have to be. You just have to be very careful in when you decide to yolo charge and when to realize that it's probably not the best idea. Um, and especially since I wasn't dealing with a barb barb faction over here, and I had the support of my axe warriors, I think it was very unwise for me to, to take those yolo charges. So I'm going to fast forward this because this is a foregone conclusion over here. The power bar is so against me here because despite the fact that I have really easy infantry to deal with and I have a lot of Massilian Hoplites left and Axe Warriors. He has a huge amount of ammo left on his Gorgo Skirmishers. Well, a pretty decent amount of ammo and he has cavalry left. So I'm going to be doing all the right things here um, as far as the late game is concerned when you don't have cavalry. For example, um, when he, he's he gone into a, a Hoplite Wall over here and I'm going to disengage from Hoplite Wall because he can't follow me. I'm going to get a quick charge on this heavy horse to get as much HP damage down to these guys as possible, and they are going to lose a lot of men. And seeing as he's still in the hoplite wall, he's going to take 
um, a lot of um, he's, he's not going to get many kills on my miscellaneous hoplites here, and I'm going to support my my, my other miscellaneous hoplites. So I'm probably going to destroy this unit. Um, but as you can see, I'm getting skirmished to death here, and there's very little I can do about it. But yeah, let's for fast forward the end of this battle. So yeah, I thought I thought it was just interesting how he played me essentially. And after the battle, the first thing he sent was um, was. Um, I let you get that YOLO charge because uh, it just wasn't worth it to me. He would have lost a lot of his heavy horse charging my, my Lancer units because my guys excel at that. And he realized that because he had so many spear units and quite a few javelins on his Preoikoi that um, it just wasn't worth it and he could beat me in the late game. Which he did. So yeah, Socrates is a very excellent player and a very good guy. Um, some of the kills here, we have 131 on my general. Honestly, my infantry did very well, and in terms of the infantry engagement, it went very well for me. I handled it well, got some nice charges with my Mycelian Hoplites. I uh, backed up Max Ward, got 150 kills in this one, 103. This is a pretty nice performance. Um, the kills over here don't matter that much, because the whole point of these guys is to get the armor piercing and HP damage done, uh, and they certainly did that. Uh, that's the only reason why you have Royal Spartans here getting only 150, 106 kills. Here's a Spartan, only 116. Uh, this guy's doing pretty well, though. So, yeah, uh, again, Spartan Hoplites not getting that many kills. These guys did pretty well, though, admittedly. But, yeah, his skirmish did, did all the work for him, and uh, his heavy horse did. And, sadly, my Step Armored Lancers, which are normally um, a very good unit, a very cost-effective unit, will get a lot more kills than this. Um, they failed pretty dramatically. So, anyway, um, I thought you'd enjoy seeing this. Uh, maybe some people will take home a lesson from this, some maybe not. But, um, yeah, I'll see you next time. Uh, thanks for watching.